Buongiorno e benvenuti. My name is Giovanna and I welcome you to my kitchen on the cliff. Today we are going to make a savory pie. This is something that is very, very appreciated in our cuisine. And in Sicily, we make these pies out of whatever is in season. Now, these are not sweets, these are not desserts. These are main dish double-crusted pies. Now, they are made not with a flaky um, uh, dough, but with a bread dough. So I'm going to show you how to make a dough that you can use for any of these savory pies that I have in my book. If you have my book, you will find savory pies made with eggplant, made with broccoli, made with ricotta and leek, uh, made with spinach and raisins, uh, lots of them. We make them all the time and they're wonderful because it's like a sandwich. It has a top crust and a bottom crust and it's really finger food. You can eat it at a party, you can take it to, on a picnic. Uh, and it just makes, a, a, I guess, a more festive meal than usual if you make them at home. I'm going to make two scotches. The ingredients are very simple. Broccoli, a little bit of tomato, garlic, and olive oil, and salt, of course. One of them I'm going to make just with those ingredients, and the other one I'm going to top with sausage. As I said before, this is a bread dough. This is not a delicate, flaky pastry. This is a bread dough, so you can use this to make bread as well as to make scotch. So we're going to measure eight cups of flour. This is a two cup measure. Okay, always pour the flour, overfill the, the cup, and then just brush away the top. This, of course, will make two pies. Or if you're not making two pies, you make one pie and one loaf of bread because it's the same dough. We're going to add a tablespoonful of yeast. This is instant yeast this is added to the dry ingredients, so it means that you don't have to mix it with water and proof it. This is a dough hook, and this is used to making bread doughs, because a bread dough is much denser than a cake batter. A batter is light. When you're making cookies in this machine, you use this, which is for a cookie dough. And if you're making a cake, you're using the whisk, which is for a batter. Okay, so I'm going to put the dough hook in. So now we raise it, and I'm going to mix the flour and yeast. Now I'm going to add half a cup of solid shortening. Next, I'm going to add the water. That's two cups of warm water. Right, this has been mixed into a rough dough, very rough dough. So we're going to let it sit for five minutes and then we're going to add the salt and finish it. The salt should not be added at the same time as the yeast because it, uh, it keeps the yeast from working at its maximum. Now I'm adding a tablespoonful of salt. This is a tablespoonful of salt. Now we turn it on again. When the dough wraps itself around the dough hook, the dough is done. Now this is not a necessary step, but I love to knead the dough by hand to make it very smooth and elastic. The sound is part of the rhythm. And here we are. We're going to Place a few drops of olive oil on the surface of the dough and coat the whole surface to stop it from stiffening. We're going to cover it and let it rise for about an hour and then we can go on with it. We're going to prepare the broccoli. We don't waste any part of, of this very good, fresh, beautiful vegetable. So I'm going to cut the stem part, the tender stem part, and just leave it in there, and that will free up the florets. You see, as you cut the stem, the florets come apart. Oh, by the way, these little leaves are perfectly fine to use 
what you do is you strip them like that. You strip them and you put them right in. They're edible. There's another one. Right? I'm cutting the tough stem. Right? This is tender, so we're going to cut it and add it. Okay. Now let's deal with these. When I was teaching at ICE, the Institute of Culinary Education, whenever we worked with broccoli, I would take these stems and ask, how many of you have ever had one of these stems raw? And most people would say, no, never. So here we are. This has to be peeled if you want to use it. So let's peel it. So how you peel it. You just take off the outer skin. This is peeled. So this can now be cut up and put into the filling. Or, if you've never had this, it's a treat. You just eat it. This was always the pleasure of whoever worked in the kitchen. My grandmother and my mother would always give it to me because I love it. And I would just chew it as a snack. Now what can you do with this? You cook it with the rest of the broccoli. Or you can use it as a crudité. You know, if you cut it into nice, well, this one, of course, is mine. You know, you can certainly put this among the carrot sticks or among the celery sticks. But if you just eat it like this, it's delicious. Buon appetito. Okay, we'll do the rest of them. Know that it's edible, not only edible, but delicious. Now we're going to wash the broccoli. When you first start, you soak this for about 10 minutes, and I usually put a, a handful of salt, plenty of water, rinse it, move it around, and then again, pick it up and put it into the other container. To season the broccoli, I'm adding tomato paste. I'm using tomato paste because the tomato sauce gives too much water too much liquid to the stuffing. If you were just making one, you would use three ounces, but we're making two pies, so we're going to use all six ounces. Measure a half a cup of olive oil. Sounds like a lot, and it is a lot, but this is a lot of broccoli. See, I'm thinning out the tomato paste, but I'm thinning it out with oil, which we also need. So rather than add additional liquid, I'm doing it this way. To season the broccoli, I'm adding salt and garlic, chopped garlic. I'm putting four good-sized cloves of garlic. There's really no other way of doing this. Hands are the best tool in the kitchen. Just keep washing before and after. There's no way of doing this and distributing all this wonderful condiment without doing it with your hands. You simply can't do it any other way. So, you know, take the time to really distribute all this. We're going to split the risen dough in two, okay? Now, split this into a smaller piece and a larger piece because one is going to be the bottom, which should be larger, and one is going to be the top, which should be smaller. Let's shape these into balls, very important, because when you're rolling out dough, if you start with a ball, you end up with a circle. If you don't start with a ball, you don't end up with a circle, okay? We always need some flour. Very soft and very nice. Okay, I think we have it. I'm going to put a little oil on the bottom of the plate, of the pie plate. This will give a little crispness to the uh, bottom dough. Okay, to transfer dough from the table to the plate, you take a rolling pin, you roll it halfway, and then you fit it over the plate. Try not to stretch it, but rather, you see what I'm doing? I'm, I'm letting it fall to the bottom of the plate. And make sure that it goes over the edge. Okay, now we fill them. Now we're going to divide this in half. Distribute it, more or less equally. 
I'm rolling out the top into a circle. I'm going to thin out the edges a little bit. We're placing the top onto the scotcher. It doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to fill the top, cover the top. Okay, now we're going to take a fork and we're going to go around the rim of the pie. I'm trimming the edge. We're going to uh, identify this one as a vegan one, so we're going to put a, a V. So now we're going to prick the top. Now that this one is done, we'll move on to the next one. So we're taking the sausage out of the casing. This is a pound of sausage. And by the way, if you want to make a sausage and a broccoli pie vegan, simply buy a vegan Italian sausage. The brand Feel Roast has a very good Italian vegan sausage, so you can do that. But they, they're both delicious. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to have the sausage. It gives it a you know, slightly different flavor. I'm spreading the uh, sausage on top. I do this so that the um, juices from the sausage will go into the, the broccoli and enhance the taste. Okay, we're gonna prick it. You can prick it in any design you like, yes. So, both focaccia have been completed. The two savory pies are ready for the oven. And never put a pie plate of any kind in the oven like this because drips can happen. You always put it into a, some kind of a pan, so if there's any drippings, it goes into the pan, not into the oven and this is going to go here. The pies are going into a preheated oven. It is at 375 Fahrenheit and 190 Celsius. I would say at 50 minutes, look at it. If you find that it's a little bit too brown, take a piece of aluminum foil and put it on top. This is a Sicilian scaccia, referred to sometimes in Italian as focaccia. And that is confusing because focaccia is also the flatbread from Liguria. So whatever we want to call it, it's a savory pie, it's delicious, make it. And if you start making it, you'll make it often. It's a great party dish and it's wonderful just for the family for dinner. Until the next time, enjoy your scaccia and we'll enjoy ours now. Ciao. Well, it cut pretty well. And this is for our vegan videographer. And I think we should give her, we should give her the, the V for videographer. Buon appetito. For people who think they don't like broccoli, make it this way and they'll like them a lot. Howard didn't, had never had broccoli practically when we got married. The way he started eating broccoli was I would make a broccoli soup with broccoli and ricotta and it was so delicious that even he had to like it. Then we expanded his horizons. The reason why many people don't like things like broccoli is that they are generally overcooked and under seasoned. If you season something well, you really can't not like it. Do remember to subscribe and share the video. Ciao, alla prossima volta. Ciao.